With the new Minions movie out, I think it's time to revisit the old classic and take a look at just how these guys even operate, by pitting them against the entirety of Manhattan. Now, before we find out if the Minions could overrun all of Manhattan and how long it would take, we'd have to find some baseline measurements for the Minions. Now, I haven't watched the new Minions movie yet, and I doubt I can put any clips from the movie onto YouTube, but we can go back to the previous Minions movie. If we take a look at Minions 1, there's only really one standout scene that I saw where the Minions were under maximum tension to exert as much force as they could, and that was here, where they were on the airplane holding on for dear life. Also, there are some scenes from Minions 2 that show the Minions in stronger environments, but we'll save that for another part. Now, let's get to doing some math and find out just how powerful the Minions are. So, the minions are on top of the wing of an airplane holding on for dear life. So, essentially, they have a force pushing them backwards, preventing them from flying smoothly. Thus, they have to counteract this force with their own strength. So, we'll do some really quick math to just find out how strong the force pushing the minions backwards is. Then, we can find out a possible minimum floor for how strong the minions are. So, the equation to find the force due to air resistance is this. The density of air multiplied by the coefficient of air resistance multiplied by the area exposed to the air, multiplied by the velocity, multiplied by one half. So we can Google how fast the plane is traveling, thus how fast the minions are moving. So the plane shown here is some plane from the Air Britannia fleet. Googling the speed of a plane like this yields that it must be traveling at around 177 meters a second. Now for the coefficient of air resistance with the minions and air, we can find out that the coefficient of air resistance between skin and air, since the minions are basically just mini humans with yellow skin. So the drag coefficient between between humans and air is anywhere from 1 to 1.3. So we'll take 1.0 as our lower bound to find a minimum floor for the minion strength. Now we need to calculate the area of the minions that's exposed to the air. The minions are about 1 meter tall, and if we assume their heads to have a diameter one third the size of their bodies, then we can use the formula for the area of a circle to find the part of the minion's head exposed to the air. Thus, by assuming our radius to be 1 over 6 meters and squaring the values, then multiplying by pi, we find the minions have an area exposed to air of about pi over 36 meters. Now, we have everything we need and can now plug it into our formula for air resistance to find that the minions are exerting a force of around 1,674 newtons, which is a decently small amount of force if the minions are simply acting to resist the force of the plane. Now, more realistically, the minions are pressing down onto the plane wing to prevent themselves from falling off, thus utilizing the force of friction. Now, we can actually calculate how strong the minions are pressing down by knowing that the force of friction will be equal to the force the minions are exerting on themselves. So the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the force that is pushing down. If the coefficient of friction between metal and the minion's human-like skin is about 0.5, then we can multiply our previous force by 2, and we find the minion now exert a downward force of about 3300 newtons, which is still relatively small, but I guess it makes sense since this guy wasn't able to hold on and since the minion's strength is in numbers. It's also important to note that the minion's strength is in endurance, where they were able to hold onto the plane for over 7 hours at the same strength value. No wonder they're basically near immortal. So now that we have a relative strength value for the minions, we can begin to determine how long it would take them to overrun Manhattan, and if they'd even be able to do so. So, Manhattan has an area of about 59 kilometers squared. Through Google, we find that there are about 10,400 minions to exist in this Despicable Me. Thus, by doing some multiplication, we're able to find the space a single minion occupies. From our previous math, we can find that the minions cover an area of around pi over 36 meters squared for a single minion. Thus, by multiplying that by the number 10,400, the total area that a minion occupies is around 1 kilometer squared. Now that we've found the force the minions can exert downwards using their hands, we can find the speed the minions travel at. So interestingly enough, finding the weight of a minion can be quite difficult, so we'll just assume them to be one kilogram each as an average. Thus, if we set the equation for the force a minion exerts equal to the force of air resistance, we can find the max speed of the minions. Using the values from last time and solving for the velocity, we find the minions have a velocity value of around 40 meters per second, which is around 144 kilometers an hour. Manhattan is about 2 kilometers wide and around 22 kilometers long. Thus, the minions can cover the entire length of the island in 9 minutes, then move to the left to cover the left side in around 25 seconds, then wrap around once more to get back to where they started in 9 minutes, leaving destruction in their path and destroying much of the things around them. This gives the minions a Manhattan time of around 18 and a half minutes, which is still faster than any of the trains that run here.